This video was made in partnership with CuriosityStream. Reptiles are a diverse faction full of many strategies, and generally speaking, they tend to be fairly straightforward. Turtles are tank builds that spec into high defensive stats at the cost of mobility. Crocodiles are damage dealers that focus on grappling to secure kills. Snakes optimize for stealth and rely on status effects to bring down their targets. But where do lizards fit into the meta? They aren't really known for extreme speed, but as far as cold-blooded builds go, they're quicker than most. And while not as tanky as turtles, and not as stealthy as snakes, they can hold their own in each of these departments as well. Some of the larger lizards can even give crocodilians a run for their money in the power category too. While many of them could best be described as jack-of-all-trades generalists, there are also plenty of lizards with extremely unique abilities. So to better understand the many different game plans employed by the lizard player base, today we're going through the lizard tier list. Before we get into the tier list though, first I'd like to start with some background on the history of the lizard faction. So back during the Carboniferous expansion, the meta revolved around the conflict between the two most powerful factions, the Amphibians and the Arthropods. However, during this time, a small subsection of the Amphibian player base unlocked two new special abilities, the Eggshell, which allowed them to respawn on dry land rather than in the water, and Scales, which gave them massively increased dehydration resistance. This eliminated their reliance on water and allowed them to explore tons of new strategies, eventually diversifying into all of the reptile builds in today's meta, as well as a few that were so overpowered that they ended up getting nerfed. The most powerful lizard build of all time was the Mosasaurus, a build that arose from a player base of beach-dwelling monitor lizards that specced into aquatic mobility options in order to avoid being griefed by dinosaurs. But what are the most powerful lizards of today's meta? We're actually going to begin in D tier, as I don't think there are any truly awful lizard builds. The adaptations they've made to eliminate the weaknesses of their amphibian ancestors is enough to escape bottom tier in my opinion. So how do lizards stack up? Let's get into the tier list. In D tier, we have the Skink, a smaller lizard build with very little in the way of unique special abilities. Their stats are also quite low, and their game plan generally just consists of chasing down players in the lower weight classes, and struggles pretty hard when forced to defend itself. In particular, this build has a lot of trouble dealing with birds. Despite the fact that it often hunts in grassy fields, it lacks the stealth stats required to avoid detection from above. In fact, many Skinks are known for being brightly colored or having one specifically brightly colored body part. Skinks try to avoid being griefed by digging burrows for themselves, and while burrows are a great hiding place, the burrowing playstyle tends to work best when you've got the ability to launch a powerful attack in a single direction, since the bottleneck of a burrow makes it near impossible for a predator to approach without getting hit. Skinks can't really mount any sort of attack, so if their burrow gets discovered, it's most likely game over. The one defensive ability they do have is one commonly found in the lizard player base, Autotomy. Autotomy allows the user to drop their tail in order to get one free escape from a combo or grab. Now, to be fair, being able to break out of your opponent's death combos is an extremely useful trait that can save you from certain defeat. But with that said, Autotomy is extremely costly to use, isn't guaranteed to work, and leaves you with reduced max HP for the rest of the game, even if your character has regenerative abilities. For the larger lizard builds, losing your tail also removes one of your best offensive options. But for the skink, this isn't as big a problem. With all that being said, skinks are one of the more lackluster lizard builds, so let's keep going and get to the more interesting ones. Also in D tier we have the Basilisk Lizard, which is most notable for its use of the sprint ability not just to move fast on land, but also to cross bodies of water. At first, this ability seems quite impressive, and it certainly is a flashy move, but upon further examination, I don't think it's really all that useful in the long run. Being on the surface of the water is quite possibly the most vulnerable position in the game, leaving you open to attacks from above and below. But ultimately, I think it's more important to just point out that the whole reason the Reptile faction split off from the Amphibian player base in the first place was to remove their reliance on water. So choosing an ability with a pretty situational use that also requires that the user be on the water's edge to use it is kind of a step backwards in the grand scheme of things. The Basilisk doesn't even have bad stats. It couldn't use the water dash move without above average mobility. But still, I think its choice of moveset is pretty self-limiting and they'd be better off specking into other signature moves. In C tier, we have two lizard builds who invested heavily into the climbing ability. 
The gecko build operates in a similar manner to the tree frog, with cling pads enabling it to climb any surface with ease. As far as mobility perks though, this is probably one of the best in the game. It works great as an escape option, but is also fantastic for utility and even for offense, allowing the user to approach targets that are normally harder to reach. Being able to hang on tight is also super important for arboreal combat, as fall damage is a major threat. With such a strong clinging ability, geckos can often be the ones tossing other players into the void below. Geckos do have a fair number of weaknesses though. They opt to use their tails to store energy, which can be a useful ability, but unfortunately in doing so, they take away the option to use their tails to attack. Geckos also do not have scales, instead opting for skin that gives disease resistance bonuses. So their armor class is lower than that of most lizards, and actually more akin to amphibians. Because of this, they're quite vulnerable to piercing damage, such as bird talons and snake fangs. And with relatively low damage output, their only real hope against such attacks is stealth, which some do definitely excel at. All in all, solid mid-tier. The Anoli is a small, agile lizard build with a surprising number of special abilities, most notable of which are their adhesive toe pads and their color-changing skin. Most builds that run the cling pad ability tend to be more bulky and cumbersome. Anolis emphatically break this mold, being both excellent climbers and having a climbing speed that rivals that of the squirrel. Because of this, they're great at escaping attacks by jumping between trees and scrambling up branches. But where things really get interesting is with the color change perk. Now, the ability to change colors is one of the most downright broken stealth perks in the game, and one of the main reasons I consider cephalopods top tier. Anolis have probably the most basic version of the color change perk, allowing them to shift between green and brown at will. While nowhere near as versatile as some other color changing builds, green and brown are pretty much all you'd need the vast majority of the time. This change is very gradual though, so it's unlikely to allow you to escape mid-combat. Which is unfortunate because, similar to the gecko, the Anoli suffers from a lack of combat options when caught out in the open. Last in C tier we have the Gila Monster. The Gila Monster is one of the tankier lizard builds, and possesses one of the highest damage outputs in the game for its size. It owes this high damage not to its actual power stat, but to its venomous bite, a rare ability among lizards. This makes them extremely dangerous in close combat, and combined with their excellent defensive stats and digging ability, this allows them to easily vanquish all the players in any nest it discovers. The Gila Monster is extremely slow moving though, which can cause issues if it's ever forced to flee, or if it needs to chase down a target. The lack of a long whip-like tail also means its defensive combat options aren't near as diverse as other larger lizards. Still, with one of the most devastating bites in the game, it's certainly no low tier. In B tier, we've got the tried and true Iguana, arguably the best representative of the lizard build as a whole, as it has essentially all the main weaknesses and strengths of its class. I have an entire video on the Iguana, so go check that out if you want an in-depth review. But in short, the Iguana sports mid-range stats across the board, and is the first lizard on the tier list to make use of its tail for something other than a sacrificial scapegoat. The Iguana's tail whip attack allows it to control a solid defensive zone around itself in all directions, enabling it to defend itself from group attacks. Tail whip's damage is on the low side though, so a persistent attacker could potentially just eat the damage in order to break through and land its own attacks. The Iguana also has access to the Autotomy ability, but this is especially costly in the Iguana's case, as it'd also be giving up its best combat move in the process. Overall, a solid mid-tier with lots of potential, especially in the Marine servers. The Chameleon build sports several of the most unique abilities in the game. So, most lizards, especially the insectivorous ones, have a pretty simple game plan for taking down enemies. Chase them down and grab them. This strategy has a lot of limitations though. First of all, it means you've got pretty much no options to attack a player who is too large to grab. It also forces you to optimize heavily towards mobility, forcing you to neglect other potential strategies in order to have a chance at catching up to your target. The Chameleon subverts this limitation by specking into one of the strangest abilities in the game, a Tether Tongue Attack. This essentially functions as a ranged grab, and is extremely effective at scoring the Chameleon kills. This also allows the Chameleon the freedom to prioritize other stats over mobility, and in the Chameleon's case, they're clearly optimized for stealth, as evidenced by their other special ability, Color Change. Now, while Chameleons can change color in order to buff their camouflage, most use it for communication and intimidation, 
shifting to brighter colors to display dominance. While they don't have the same cling pads that geckos and anoles do, their prehensile tail gives them extra security to ensure that they don't get easily ripped out of trees, and allows them to attack from riskier positions. With all this said though, they still struggle when caught out in the open because of their low mobility, and they also share the same offensive weakness of not being able to take down players that they can't gulp down in a single bite. The Tegu is a lizard build that has long been overlooked, but has recently become a serious contender on the tier list. Its recent invasion into the North American server has destabilized the local meta, and when you look at their stats, it's easy to see why. Tegus are similar in both strategy and stats to the Iguana, but slightly slower and more defense-oriented. Their thicker hide and stockier build allows them to shake off attacks that would send other characters reeling. They've also got a higher intelligence stat than most lizards, which in addition to making them surprisingly decent support builds, also makes them great at outsmarting builds like alligators in order to attack their nests. Tegus are also omnivores, meaning they aren't forced to participate in PvP in order to level up. They did spec into the autotomy ability though, which I unfortunately think keeps them out of top tier. Before I reveal the top tier lizards, I just want to say real quick, if you've made it this far and are enjoying the video, it would sure make my day if you subscribed. Thanks. So without a shadow of a doubt, the best lizard build is the Monitor Lizard. They have everything. They've got the best stats, a combination of great mobility, power, size, and intelligence. Similar to the Iguana, Monitor Lizards have an extremely powerful tail whip, capable of deterring even top tier predators. Monitor Lizards also have a Venomous Bite, which again, is a rarity in the Lizard faction. While not the speediest lizards outright, they do have great versatility in their movement, being able to swim efficiently as well as climb most surfaces, though not to the same degree as the marine iguana or the gecko respectively. Their high intelligence enables them to consistently figure out ways to successfully raid the spawn points of other players, and their high defense makes it so they can be rather difficult to stop once they've committed to an attack. This faction also contains the most powerful lizard in the game, a lizard that reaches near dinosaur power levels. Komodo dragons are extremely powerful. They have a venomous bite that, while not as powerful as Cobra Venom, is still powerful enough to seriously weaken even the tankiest builds. But even without that, they'd be an absolute powerhouse. Their tail swipes, claw slashes, and thrashing bites can easily shred through the HP of their targets. Their only real weakness is their speed, which, while solid, isn't broken by any means. Still, with their incredible sense of smell, a player can never really truly escape a Komodo that's hunting them. The distance that you need to flee in order to make the Komodo unable to track you down would require you to leave the island server entirely. Last but certainly not least, Komodos, as well as the entire Monitor Lizard player base, understand that their tails are an invaluable weapon that shouldn't be sacrificed in order to escape a battle. So there you have it, the Lizard tier list. Hopefully now you've got a good understanding of the Lizard's strategies and matchups. Admittedly, there were a few things I had to cut from the script of this video to avoid demonetization or age restriction. If you want to see the director's cut of this episode, you can check it out on Nebula, a streaming service made by and for creators. I do this with all of my new videos, uploading ad-free and uncensored versions of my videos there, as well as a few entirely exclusive videos. In addition, you can check out my appearance on the Nebula-exclusive podcast Genesis if you're interested in hearing my character's backstory. Nebula has partnered with CuriosityStream to bring you both services for less than 15 bucks a year, which is 26% off the price of what CuriosityStream alone normally goes for. CuriosityStream, if you somehow didn't already know, is another amazing streaming service where you can watch thousands of high-quality documentaries, including Amazing Dino World, a documentary about the aforementioned Mosasaurus. To get access, head to curiositystream.com slash Thanks again to CuriosityStream for partnering with us at Nebula. Thank you to my patrons on Patreon, and thank you for watching.